Navigating one's way around in a foreign country, and especially in small towns in Europe, can prove to be quite challenging. Even with Google Maps, one can easily get turned around because many small towns have street names in unusually marked locations. That is assuming if they have marked street names at all. Most street name signs are found on the side of buildings, but after many years are weathered, illegible, or missing some or all of the tiles that are used to comprise the name. We encountered this very thing in Capistrano while trying to locate our bed and breakfast. We never did get an address for the location, just directions from the owner, which were as follows. When you pass the petrol station on your right, turn left at the next roundabout to Capistrano. Stay on this road. Go up the hill to a sharp bend to the left. Ignore this. Keep right. Go down and follow the road. Go up the hill carefully. There is a house on your right. Turn right here onto a cobbled road. You might not be surprised that we had great difficulty finding the home. There was more than one home to turn right at, and there was more than one cobblestone road. We parked the car on a flat part of the street, which believe me was a rare find in Capistrano, and on foot eventually found the home we were looking for. The next challenge was getting the car up the hill to our unit without burning the clutch out or rolling backwards while trying to start the car on such a dramatic angle. After checking into our Airbnb, that night we attended a dinner at a local restaurant. Angelo introduced us to those who would become our picking team for the duration of the time we were in Ofena. The food was homemade, delicious, and plentiful. Too plentiful, in fact. Light and creamy raviolis, fried pizza dough, charcuterie, minestrone soup, fettuccine alfredo, lamb multiple different ways, pork, it just didn't end. And when we finally wrapped up close to midnight, we practically needed to be rolled out of the restaurant. There was no doubt this was the buttering up phase for the pickers. I had been forewarned by Adriana about Angelo's personality transformation while leading a pick. Do you want to hear my side of the story? Absolutely. Okay, so I hear about this olive harvesting and making oil and I thought I'd like to go too. And I did go in 2009, 10, it was right after the earthquake. Yep. He and I are on this one uh, grove, laying out the nets, uh, raking down the, the, uh, the olives, and uh, he, he's got it all going, and I know how to lay a net. I, I'm doing my very best. Uh, I know how to put the net around the tree so that the olives don't fall out. Well, he really cracked the whip. He says, no, you are doing it wrong. You have to do it this way. He worked me so hard, ordering me around, do this, no, you're doing it wrong, you have to do it the other way, hurry up, because sundown is coming. The, the sundown starts at four o'clock at that point over the mountain. And I said, this is the first and last time I'm coming. If I have to go and buy oil from Pusa Terry and pay $50 a bottle for that virgin oil, olive oil, I will. But I'm not coming again to help you. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I really don't end up helping you much. And while she didn't come right out and say it in those words, reading between the lines, I recognized the warning. While I believe Adriana's perspective on this, I also have to take into consideration that Angelo and Adriana have been together for over 50 years. And like all couples that have long-standing relationships, they have a unique way of interacting and communicating. Yes, certainly. We can go more into details. Yes, yes, we are too lengthy, I think. Don't ask me, you're doing just as much. <laughs> of course. Let's face it. To make it that long, a couple has to know how to voice their opinions and remain steadfast in what they will and will not do. In Adriana's case, her unwillingness to join the annual harvest in Ofena was only partially due to the fact that she does not want to return to a home that is unrepaired and therefore unsafe to live. She is aware that when the harvest is on, Angelo has a finite period of time to get the olives off the various plots he owns and to the frontoyo for pressing and ultimately bottling. The uncertainty of the weather, 
the limited working timeline, and organizing various picking crews can take a toll on the normally mild-mannered and charming Angelo. He morphs into a person who is all business, knowing what needs to be done and the process in which it should be completed. The following day was our first full day in Ofana, and Angelo, along with our picking group, began to tour the local area. As we drove to our brunch location, there were postcard views around every corner, which necessitated us to stop for photographs. Towns looking down on the valley, a valley that looks like a patchwork quilt with different textured landscapes clashing with each other. Or in other areas, landscapes that are illuminated under the sun's glow, while other areas are shrouded in relative darkness as the sun's stretched rays are covered by clouds. Finally arriving at our brunch location, we found ourselves literally in the middle of nowhere. Craggy mountains on the horizon and barren, rocky flatlands behind us. We could hear the wind wisping through the long grass while providing a biting chill that reminded us that it was indeed autumn. Ristoro Muciente was lined up out the door and the number we received to denote where we were in line was about 50 numbers behind the one currently being served. I had the idea that perhaps I could jump the queue to buy a couple bottles of wine and have a glass each while the eight of us waited. There was little to no seating on the inside. Most of the tables, picnic tables at that, were located outside, along with little hibachi-like barbecues that people were cooking their lunches on. No, inside was more akin to a cross between a deli and a butcher. As I grabbed the young lady's attention, and had her agree to get us a couple of bottles of wine, Angelo came over and whispered in my ear, get 50 arrostocinis. Arrosticini is really what's popular. And no, what it is, is it's a, a, a miniature shish kebab made with lamb on a It's skewer. also a square, almost a small square of lamb. Yeah, and it's long. Cube, cubes of lamb on a skewer and they're barbecued. Simply following orders, I asked for 50 arrostacinis, and then Angelo whispered in my ear again, asking me to get some prosciutto. I was certain the girl was gonna get annoyed with me, especially considering I had skipped the line. The woman remained unfazed, and then I was asked to get some pecorino cheese. So you get the pecorino tomato, she gives it to you. Okay. Pushing our luck, I was even asked to get some bread and some beer. Somehow, I had managed to order our entire lunch and did so two hours quicker than expected. We all headed outside to the picnic area where the small hibachi-like barbecues were being lit by what appeared to be a flamethrower and got busy cooking our lamb skewers. A portion of the group set up the table, opened the wine and got the cheese and meat out while the other group continued to cook these deliciously seasoned juicy lamb kebabs to perfection. At Angelo's direction, we began toasting the bread on the hibachi, and before you know it, we were having a traditional Italian feast. Nothing fancy, but oh, so satisfying. Bread. Was it out of the lady? Should we put the bread on the She don't even ask the question. Didn't ask him a ticket or nothing. Nothing. No. I was behind it. I could believe it. And then he's like, what? And then you kept whispering more things in my ear. Well, I had to. At that point, if she was willing, we were willing. Now sated, we headed to Rocco Collagio, a well-preserved stone fortress that sits on a large hill overlooking the plain of Novello at one of the highest points on the ancient barony of Carapella. Built of stone and masonry, exclusively for military purposes, and intended only to accommodate troops and never as a residence for nobles. The structure, made of very white stone and with a square layout, has become known to most as a popular film set. Lady Hawk, The Name of the Rose, and The American, among others, were filmed here. If you keep walking along the path that leads to Rocco Collagio, you will come upon a church, Chiesa di Santa Maria della Pieta, on the edge of the rock. It was built between the 16th and 17th centuries. It lies about 1,432 meters above sea level. I have to admit, it must only be the most faithful of worshippers who would make the trek to the weekly service. It was just enough to have to climb these levels and only once as a tourist. 
The view at the top made the trek all worthwhile. And as the sun set literally and figuratively on what was our first full day in Ofana, I couldn't help but wonder what was in store for us the following day as we embarked on our first olive picking experience. <laughs>